Google Hangout and get Rebecca K on the phone from rosecoloredlove.com. All right, we got you. Yay. Re Rebecca K, everybody. We did it. <laughs> We're doing it. We're doing it. So you're in the park right now in San Francisco, and that's what it looks like. Yeah, I'm in uh, Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. I got uh, kind of trapped here because the traffic is so crazy. Oh, my gosh. So it's about 4.15 out there, How? and you have to drive everywhere, so I, I can only imagine how nuts it is right now, right? Yeah, on a Sunday, everyone's out and about. Tons of people at the park, except we kind of cleaned out this area. It's pretty empty <laughs> right now. <laughs> that sounds good. So you got the park to yourself. It's fantastic. All right, so I want to go into this whole concept that, that I'm talking about here. It's um, basically I was thinking about the other day where, where when you're looking for a job, yeah, it's very similar uh -huh. to um, uh, to how you go through the interview process, right? You 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 dress up really nice and things like that. And I took a bunch of notes and I'm gonna go through my notes and you just jump in whenever you want. All right? Yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. So the first thing that I thought of is back in the day. When I was in high school, right? When I um, when I was really young, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I saw, you know, a commercial for like Taco Bell because that was definitely my first job. <laughs> and and yeah. I, and I looked up. Mine was McDonald's. Oh, see, there you go. Um, you were <laughs> over at McDonald's, and I just remember that you know I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I. I knew that I didn't want to do that job for a long time. So for me, it was like, you know, kind of like the first girl that I was dating where where I definitely, you know, I knew I didn't want to really be with her for a long time. I, you know, I uh -huh. just wanted to do a little getting some stuff in my hand, like money and, you know, and whatever. Use your mind however the, however the way you want to use it. But, um, you know, and even at the time, it was like, you know, I kind of was in the mood to, like, kind of date a couple girls. So, uh, you know, I had, just like the same thing with my job. Like, I had a couple jobs at the same time. I, I feel like there's a lot of similarities in what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, when you're first starting to date people when you're younger, there's, there's no sense typically of commitment. I mean, a lot of times I find right now at the age that I'm at, you see resistance in dating because if I start to date you and you're in your late twenties, that might mean marriage is the next step. So there's this pressure of, is she the right one? But when you're in high school and 16 and you're starting your first job, there's so much more freedom in dating someone. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, you have a couple jobs, you're just, you're just happy to be making some money, you know, it's kind of just like dating where, you know, you're happy to probably get some, you know, <laughs> things like yeah. that. I mean, we're just, we're just going <laughs> to throw it all out there right now. Um, so then, you know, eventually you end up going to college. You end up figuring out what it is you really want to do. Um, you know, you so essentially it's like you start learning more about the girl that you really want to be with. You know what I mean? Like you really figure out what uh -huh. qualities of the girl it is that you're really looking for. And then, you know. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, maybe you go into an internship. You start hanging out with girls that are very similar to what, you know, you really want to be with and stuff like that. And then, and then you know, maybe even at the time, yeah. maybe even at the time you have a random job. You're, it's like you're dating a random girl at the same time or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just to get you by because everybody's got needs. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I could see it, like those college days when you apply it to work is very uh, experimental. Like college in itself is defined as like a time of experimenting and all of that. So oh, I could yeah. see where that connects. And oh, yeah. like I look back at my, co <laughs> my college experience, I actually ended up dating someone for almost all of college and getting engaged. But I had people around me, like I was an extreme, <laughs> but I was still figuring things out and yeah, I think things start to get to a different level of seriousness, and uh -huh. there's a higher percentage of maybe finding, quote unquote, the one. Uh, but it, yeah, it's definitely a different level. And I think, yeah, like you said, maybe you're experimenting and um, getting to know all sorts of different people because usually you go away to college and you're in a different atmosphere than you've been uh, the majority of your life uh, 
you know, some people come from more of a small town or kind of shelter, and then they're going to college, and it's like so much freedom. So you get to really do you. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. You know, you start to figure it out what you're getting into, and I totally forgot that you were in, that you were engaged during college until until you I just was. mentioned that. Yeah, that totally just refreshed my memory. I was like, oh yeah, no way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. Um, could you imagine that different life that you would have led at that? Right yeah. Now? Well, it all comes down to decisions. I mean, I you I could have been married and move forward with that but college was coming to an end and I had to start to make adult decisions and I saw my life going in a different path and it actually funny enough had a lot to do with my career at that time and not feeling like I could in that relationship pursue the things I really wanted to I felt like I had to um maybe sacrifice a lot of choices and um, to move forward in my career. Mm -hmm. So this has been a topic that's been really heavy on my mind lately because I had a conversation with a girlfriend and we are talking about uh, successful people and sometimes the most successful people find themselves single because they put their career in front of uh, dating someone and you know talking to people that can really balance it out and find the right uh collaboration of relationship and career because i think once you have stability of you feel good in your job you feel like you can support yourself and you know a partner there's a different level you're ready to commit right <laughs> and settle down so definitely and you know you touched on something that i wanted to use as a transition to um to the next part of this too which is really great when do you talk about how you know towards the end of college and towards that transition of what we're looking for and what we're trying to get out of and stuff when it, for me it's like there's different scenarios that end up happening out of college puffin you better knock it off <laughs> <laughs> that's the other dog that's with me <laughs> oh is it oh, okay are you dog sitting right now uh no i i have a friend and a dog with me that's chase and connie <laughs> Shout out to them. Oh, Chase and Connie. <laughs> so um, the next part of this that I was trying to get into is what you do when you get out of college. So either, you know, you have a dream job lined up. You know, that that girl that you were working on during college, she turns into the, somebody that you're probably going to marry, right? Or even that, mm -hmm. you know, your parents have hooked you up with something. <laughs> you know what I mean? They hooked you up with either a job. They hooked you up with, with yeah. a dream girl that was like a neighbor or something like that. Or... Um, if you're like me, you're just unlucky all together, and you got to do what everybody does. You put your resume out there, and with the resume, you mm -hmm. start getting on, going on all these different interviews and stuff like that. So with the yeah. interviews, I consider the interview to be exactly like the first date, where you totally dress to impress, you totally, uh -huh. you know, you totally had to hype yourself up because you're selling yourself at this point. I'm a salesperson. You're a salesperson. You know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. Yeah. Sometimes you're telling the truth. Maybe sometimes they throw in a little lies in there. You know, but whatever you got to do, because at the end of the day, you're really trying to impress this person. And on the other end of the spectrum, especially in your position, being, you know, a huge boss at a couple of huge camp companies and stuff like that, you definitely have to do a lot of hiring and firing. So during the interview process, tell us more, like, especially with dating too, when you go on these dates with these guys where you're trying to figure out if you're going to be compatible, if they're going to work out, and if you think that there's going to be a serious relationship mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, let's see if I can organize my thoughts on this one. Well, I'll start by saying this is actually a big reason I stopped doing any form i've been single maybe five or so years right. uh but <laughs> i stopped doing online dating and if i do sign up for it for me i only last maybe about a week because <laughs> it not even because it feels like a job like i feel like i have to yeah. message these people and build a conversation and then i go on this date and usually i'm super positive but i'm gonna be straight transparent and real with you if i go on a date and it's like a flop in person i'm like i can't get that time back <laughs> <laughs> so it can feel it just it can feel defeating and what's crazy is I actually know some people that have found the love of their life and gotten married in, um, you know, maybe the dating life online. For me, I definitely agree and see where you're coming from. Like a date can be stressful and there's so many emotions because 
you have to be really vulnerable. You're about to like put yourself out there. And I think as we get older and what you kind of reference, like the dates we've had prior or the relationships we had prior, it's kind of like education and work experience. Like you're absorbing all of this knowledge and experience to contribute towards the next person and then ultimately finding the right one. Like you know what you want in a person and you know what you don't. And so when you start to see those things, like if I'm on a date with someone, I'll plug in certain things to the conversation that are important to me. Like going to church on Sundays is important to me. So I might plug spirituality into my conversation. And if that doesn't send up like interest in them or they don't really contribute towards that conversation, I might say, you know, this might not be right because I don't know if my values and the things that are important to me align with this person. And I think it's the same in a job. You know, recently I just found a new job and I let that job find me, which is another topic I'll chat with you about in a second. But um, I, I had to make sure that this job that I took, if I wanted it to be a career, so let's compare it to like a long-term relationship, I needed it to share the same values that were important to me. So it has, you know, a base of integrity, um, good communication. Those were things I was looking for in a job and the same things I look for in a relationship. So uh, I definitely see where you're coming from. And just to plug in my other thought, so recently when I was looking for a new job, um, I actually wasn't looking at all. I felt very drawn to let the job find me. And mm-hmm. I actually now kind of feel that way about a relationship too. I like told myself, stop putting in applications for relationships like my resume is out there and my resume is me you know just being me and waiting for the right person to see my resume and say hey she has all the qualifications I'm looking for uh so it's weird but that's kind of been my mentality towards it currently yeah definitely and I and I get I, I I can I can relate because for me um you know I didn't I totally before I met Ruru, I totally gave <laughs> up on the, on dating and everything. I totally was just like, you know what? I was in the same boat. I had all the apps. I had you know I had like a the profile on on Matches dot com and and all of that. Yeah. And then I was just like, you know what? Like I'm done. Forget it. And you know I just yeah like the way that we met it was so great. Knowing that we actually met somebody through a mutual friend. Somebody, you know, somebody that has known me forever, has has known her forever, and then I don't even think that this person even thought that the two of us were gonna end up, you know, getting intimate in the same yeah. the same way and stuff like that. Another thing that you touched on that I really thought about was like, you know, the previous experiences, and it really shapes for what you're looking for and stuff like that. And for me, mm-hmm. I definitely relate to that where it comes to, like. It, for for me, as as I was going through my job search and stuff like that, I'm not allowed to talk about any of that yet. Ruru, Ruru <laughs> cut me off. She said, "Nope, you're not doing that yet." <laughs> it's okay. It's too fresh. It's too fresh. It stays between you two. <laughs> exactly. But she, but a lot of the things that I didn't realize when I was younger didn't matter. Like for instance, um, having working really long hours to the like you know. Um, to mm-hmm. nine to thirty, ten o'clock at night. To me, I didn't realize how much that those, you know, made a difference in in the overall aspect. So when I went into where, you know, this transition that I'm even going through in that in that, I realized that that was one thing for me that that I didn't want mm-hmm. anymore. You know what I mean? I wanted to have normal normal banker's hours. Yeah. Not allowed to talk about it. That's it. That's it. That's the only tease that I'm really going with. <laughs> <laughs> but no, what? I think that's. It's really cool and you don't have to go into it anymore, but I completely agree. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a dreamer and I'm a romantic. So I think I've always had it in my mind uh, that it would just happen naturally and organically. And I think some people wait for that and they find the right thing. And then some people, you know, make their love life happen and that can work in some scenarios. Um, But I really think there's something special about waiting for life to just kind of happen Mm -hmm. and that right person coming along because I think then all the stuff that you brought up, like dressing to impress and all that, yes, it's still there on that first date, but there's still, there's something easy about it. Like there's something right about it and you just know, um, 
because it happened divinely or, you know, it happened through mutual friends and you have a level of um, comfort in it. So, that, I mean, that's personally the kind of relationship I'm holding out for. Like, I'd rather wait and be patient and let this person and just kind of come to me. And that doesn't mean like they have to find me, but <laughs> I'm right here. Like, Look of, at me. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> um, in Golden Gate Park right now. Uh, San Francisco, United States. But, yeah, I think if I can just be me and keep my eyes open and my head up, but not taking so much time to try to make it happen and like force it. There's so many people will be like, oh, what if I miss it? You're not going to miss it. Like everyone, everyone's story's laid out already. Like it's going to happen how it's going to happen. We exactly. just get frustrated because it's not on our time frame. And so, yeah, just be patient to all those other people out there. Exactly. And, um, but I think you should. I think when you come to a relationship and it's a first date and you dress to impress and you try to put out your best self, I, that means a lot. I mean, if you've ever had a date with someone and they show up looking like a bum or, you know, aren't really, like, respectable, then sayonara. Yeah. So. The other point I wanted to make, especially with the, the dressing to impress, is it's funny because um, um, re the other Rebecca in my life wrote on, on my notes, eventually, you don't care what you look like. <laughs> as, as one of those things that, that once, you, once you get comfortable and things like that, you definitely just change to yeah. where you're at and, and things. And then, and then eventually, you know, you, um, you make that transition to, to where you're at. Now, I also made some notes on having a crappy job and how and how you feel and how this yeah. how i related this to relationships um you know you'll be able to figure out too like because you know a lot of the times you do have a crappy job especially when you're in college or you know when you're mm -hmm. out of college for two years all right that's it that's it i'm, I'm done that's that's yeah. all i'm doing with but um you know when you really promise when you really promise like a b and c and they barely even deliver mm -hmm. on x y and z I, um, you know, you invest all of your time and you barely see any sort of return on that investment of your time yeah. and your money and things like that. Yeah. You know, some of these jobs, especially, you know, if you work in fast food and things like that, it's it's full of drama. Yeah. It's very abusive and things like that. And, you know, they um, huh. and, you know, they you kind of feel like they cheated on you, especially with when you put in mm -hmm. all this time, you put in all this effort and you know you see somebody mm. else get a promotion or you see somebody else get get bumped up mm -hmm. and you don't get that raise or anything like that you know yeah i'll definitely i mean i have a comment on that i think it's interesting because even in a job you might stay with forever or a career that um yeah you retire with there's going to be moments where it's tough and you go through hard things and like the other Rebecca uh, said, like, you know, later on, you might not care what each other looks like clothing wise, like you might not dress to impress. I think that happens in our work life, too. Like you get comfortable in a custom and uh, you start to like mold to it. And then, you know, it's easy to become resentful in situations. And there's my advice, which comes from someone much smarter and experienced in a marriage <laughs> than I am. Right. Uh, their best their best advice that they gave me is uh they asked you know when's the last time you changed the oil in your car what about you timmy when's the last time you changed the oil in your car the last time i changed my oil in my car was about two months ago but <laughs> the the laughing okay. joke with everyone so, is that my car sucks and you know that that's a different time but anyway keep going to what you're talking about no, everything's but, breaking but on is, my car a lot of people a lot of people think about the oil in their car and they'll change the oil in their car, but they won't actually take time in a good relationship to do an oil change on that relationship. So they won't take the time, even when things are good, to make sure it continues to grow to be better. Well, how do you do it? So they wait until. How do you do an oil well, change on your car? Uh, I don't, I don't know all the technicalities, but you're draining the old oil and you're filling it with. Oh no, no, I meant on the so, relationship. That's what I meant to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it would have been funnier if you explained how to do it on a car. <laughs> now, how do you give well, an oil change in a relationship? Was, uh, a mechanic, so oh, I got a little okay. bit of knowledge, but it's 
for example, taking time to strengthen your relationship? Are you, you know, I guess my point is a lot of people wait until a relationship is crumbling to fix it instead of trying to make it strong during the relationship. So maybe it's going on a vacation and just spending time you and that person. Maybe it's going to um, like a relationship retreat or seminar to, I don't know, grow and learn from other people. Like too often people go to fix a relationship instead of building it in the moment and giving it those like constant oil changes. So just making sure you have a timeline, maybe three times a year, just like you want to do the oil change on your car three times a year, right. you're taking three times to so, really invest. So what you're really saying is, is basically doing, being proactive. I lost my dog. <laughs> oh, do you need to go get your dog? <laughs> no, it's okay. okay. I was like, wait, I lost my dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we don't have children yet. We're doing it live. <laughs> We're doing it live. We're doing it live. No. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's like uh, it's, it's okay. It, what are your thoughts on that? For me, it's what you're trying to say is that it's really important to be proactive instead of being reactive. Because if in a lot of relationships, you end up doing things because of what happened. You know what I mean? It's like when your car breaks down, you didn't. To use the same analogy, it's because you didn't change change the oil when you were supposed to, and now whatever yeah. happens. It, and things like that. So that's basically where you're where you're going with that, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good feedback. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, all right. Glad so, it was received. So, one of the final points I wanted to make is when it finally comes down to a good job. Now, very similar to what you're saying uh -huh. before. A lot of the times, just like the good girl, it's when you come. It comes out of nowhere. You, just like you said before. Uh -huh. Now, um, this person, she promises on A, B, and C. She's got references. She's got reviews online. She's, you know, other people in the community know her. Yeah, recommendations. Well, I mean, that sounds gross. Okay. <laughs> We're talking about girls in that sense. from friends. Yeah, yeah. You think that that, yeah, exactly. But, she, you know, you do have friends that are like, oh, yeah, she's a really good girl. You know, she's. She's a she's a roo roo basically, you know. She's a keeper. Yeah, she's, she's a keeper. She's a keeper, and then you know, um, so you're ready to make that long term investment, and you can you can see mm -hmm. a future together, and but maybe maybe they're selling you on the same sort of aspect, but at the end of the day, just like the Monster dot com app, you can always swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> they have new jobs now where you can just swipe right. I I thought it was funny. I used. Oh yeah. And, yeah. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I get the reference. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, well, that's the thing too. I think it can go the opposite way. People can jump into thinking they found the right person, but actually not be in the right place in their life to receive that relationship. Right. Um, super corny, but uh, I love Freddie Prince Jr. and Sarah Michelle Gellar. They've been married for like 15 years and they're the cutest couple uh, but they just had their anniversary and he like did a video or something just explaining, uh, why he's had such a strong relationship for 15 years. And he's like, you know, you really had to get to a place where you were both secure with yourself, uh, that you felt secure and successful where you were in life at that moment, that if someone else came around, you know, it wouldn't phase you. You wouldn't be looking for like, you know, a cuter girl to snatch or to swipe right like you said um exactly you're ready to commit and settle with this person so i sometimes people think they're there too and they jump into it and then uh, unfortunately you know it could lead to a breakup down the line who knows but i think when you can have open communication and kind of share where you're at um you know when it's right and so i think that takes a lot of responsibility on ourselves to make sure we're honest with ourselves and if I'm in the right place to be in a relationship and making sure that person is too. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, no, it, it totally makes sense because it's like, you know, we, we, we so I definitely didn't feel like I was in the right time or in the right place where, where, where I was and you know, where I'm, where I'm ending and stuff like that. And it just, yeah. and it's just as far as my career goes, because, 
it's it's like yeah, you do, I literally that word comes into play where it's like you didn't I didn't see the long term benefit for what I was really looking to accomplish and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. so so um you know at, at least now there's an opportunity to where I can really find that and you know just just like I got with with the rooster, you know what I mean? And she she actually she sent yeah. me a text. She she says hello and she also says at the end Make sure you comment about Rebecca's video relating to finding the right job and career path. So tell us more about that video that you had put out. Wait, oh, sorry. I don't know if my picture is still there. Sorry if it's gone. Um, can you ask that again? Which video? The video that you made on rosecolorlove.com for everyone that will be checking this out after. On your video relating to finding the right job and career path. Oh, yeah. Uh, a be your own manager. <laughs> the be your own manager video. That's what it's called. Yeah. Um, hmm. On the th- I mean, that's something that my mom has honestly. I, we all got those gems that we get from our parents usually, or that parental figure that sticks with us, and that's one of them. Um, I've always known, and as soon as I got into management, I really surrounded myself with people and shared with them like make sure you're always your own manager um because sometimes you know your actual supervisor or your your manager is not going to be able to give you all the attention you need so you need to make sure you take care of you and i think so often we get caught up in everybody else's feelings and how is my decision going to affect them and that's good to think about that and to have that um i guess like compassion and empathy uh And so just a reminder, and I think that ties into relationships, too, of making sure you take care of you. I mean, I've been in relationships as well where I stayed in them longer than I needed to, even though I knew it wasn't right, because I I cared more about their reaction and how it was going to affect them. And so I feel like careers and um, how we manage ourselves and then relationships, I think they really marry each other. There's such comparisons and it was a really good topic to talk about. So, uh, that's why we do it, because it's a good topic. Yeah. And, all right, Rebecca, yeah. I think I took up enough of your time. Thank you so much for talking to us about the correlation between having a job and having a career. I'm going to let you get back to your walk. I know that Puffin's probably done and. Colleen, and th- thank your friends. He's running that- amok, like <laughs> just running around me. <laughs> oh, it sounds good. All right, thank you so much, and we will talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks. So that was Rebecca K from RoseColoredLove.com. So, um.